Hello, everyone who's joining in. We're just going to wait a couple minutes before kicking off officially just to make sure that everybody can join because we're technically one minute early. But hello, if you can let us know where you're dialing in from, it just shows how old I am, um, where you're calling in from uh, in the chat. That'd be great. It's always good to see where people are joining from, how early in the morning or how late in the day it is for you. Oh, there's, it's a nice combination, actually. <laughs> Quite a lot from Europe. Couple from Canada. One from Texas, I saw. Wow. And if anybody is actually still on dial-up internet, uh, please let us know, because that is very impressive. Um, I doubt that's the case. I think there's possibly even people here who don't know what dial up internet is because we are all aging um this is the <laughs> so this is the uh zero height webinar on design systems and ai very excited about this one uh we'll go through some uh quick admin before we get started uh especially now we've got a few folks in the room so basically today we're going to be uh talking to our amazing panelists about design systems and AI, what's next, what's currently happening, what the challenges are, are there any ethical or moral quandaries there? Um, some exciting things, we've got so many questions that we want to get through. Uh, how we're going to run it today is that we're going to run it with um, half an hour up front of the questions that we're pre-prepared, and I'll be chatting to the panelists about that. And then um, afterwards, at the half hour mark, we will swap it over to audience questions. So if you have any questions that come up whilst you're um, watching the first half, or if you've got any preloaded, um, then please throw them in the chat. We'll have the lovely uh, Connie and Jules moderating that um, on the side there. Uh, yes, if you want to keep the conversation going and you're not already in our Slack community zeros, please come and join us at zerohight.com slash Slack. Uh, it's a really lovely little community. Uh, I say little. I think it's about two and a half thousand people now. Uh, and it's growing sort of week on week, which is fantastic. If you do need any assistance, uh, please message Connie or Jules. They're in the chat there. You can at them. I'm pretty sure you can privately message them there too. Um, especially if there is anything that's you know going wrong or um, you need help with anything. Uh, we do operate a safe space in here and we do not stand for any kind of uh, racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, any of the nasty stuff. Basically, to be candid about it, don't be a dick is, is pretty much our motto here. Um, we are recording this today. Uh, so we will be sending you the email with the video later. Uh, we'll also be putting that up on our YouTube channel as well. Um, and then, uh, unfortunately, the um, we don't have live captioning in here today uh, because Demio don't offer it. So we're, we've got it high on their products feature list. Uh, but um, we do recommend using webcaptioner.com if you want to have some uh, auto captions. Uh, for today. I do talk fast, so I apologize in advance. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned, don't be a jerk, please. Um, just a small announcement of a few upcoming events. Jeez, we've got a lot. Uh, so we've got Design Systems WTF uh, recording live the third episode tomorrow at 4.30pm, uh, I believe, British time, which is 8.30am Pacific time and 1130 on the East Coast. Uh, the topic is actually on AI as well, uh, because I'm not, I'm only asking the questions today. So I'm looking forward to being able to dive into some conversations with Michelle about that tomorrow. Uh, we also have the Public Voting for Design Systems Awards happening this week, which uh, at one of our lovely panelists, Sil, is a judge on. Um, so that public voting for, for those awards is going live uh, this week. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, we're launching our annual How We Document survey, uh, where we do a state of design systems and design system documentation. Uh, that's being launched on the 16th of October. On the 20th of October, we're sponsoring WDC conference down in Bristol, which is a great little creative conference. Uh, if you're interested, actually chuck it in the chat and we have a code. Um, actually, I can put the, 
the the code in very shortly, uh, which will get you 20% off of the ticket if you happen to be around Bristol. Uh, we have a new webinar and podcast launching on the 31st of October, which is Beyond the Button. Uh, two lovely folks uh, from Zero Height, Neff and Michelle, are going to be discussing uh, everything to do with design systems and components and product design and UX design. And then finally, we have one more webinar happening on the 15th of November, uh, Design System Adoption. There is way too much going on at the moment at Zero Height. It is a fantastic place to be. And it's great to keep an eye on everything that's going on because yeah, we're, we're basically we've all got ADHD and we can't sit still. Um, also a big one. Uh, so Design World Design Systems Week is back for its second year. Uh, so please mark that in your calendar, November 26th to December tw uh, 2nd. Um, it may or may not be when the Design System Awards event is actually happening. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that. Um, but we will be celebrating it with loads of Design Systems events all around the world. Uh, so please keep uh, an eye on that. Go to designsystemsweek.com and register your interest there, especially if you're interested in putting on an event. It'd be really great. Cool. Um, before I forget, I'm just going to put the uh, WC... WDC code in the uh, zero DC uh, for twenty percent off. There we go, professional. Um, so, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our amazing panelists uh, today. We've got, uh, and I apologise in advance if I mess up the pronunciation here. Uh, <laughs> we have Tony. Beltramelli, the co-founder and CEO of UIZ. You got UIZ. I'll let you say that one properly. Um, Sil Bamula, uh, who's the founder of the Fantastic Inter Design Systems. Uh, we've got Catherine Gonzalez, head of design infrastructure at DoorDash, and I'll be your host for today. My name's Luke, and I am the head of marketing at Zero Height. Uh, but I'll let these lovely folks introduce themselves properly. Uh, and give you a little bit of of uh, color around who they are and where they come from. So, Tony, if you want to go first. Sounds good. I can start, although, um, you know, usually we say ladies first, but uh, le let's just do it uh, in a <laughs> in a different fashion. So, I'm Tony. I'm CEO and co-founder of Wizard, uh, UIZRD.com, and we are building a product design tool powered by AI. Um, and my background is uh, in AI and machine learning. I'm a massive nerd, and I'm really looking forward to talk about how this impact design and design systems specifically. Fantastic. Sil? Hey there, my name is Sil. I'm the founder of Inter Design Systems, which is a design systems community and conference I do organize our annual design systems conference, which invites all design systems makers from all around the world to come together to share the newest workflows and techniques. Um, a fun fact about myself, I used to be a freelance design systems designer or lead, but after helping more than 20 companies migrating their UI kits from one design to the other, I got so bored of manually creating all those components over and over again, you know, and manually styling the components. So I'm very much looking forward to not create any button <laughs> variations, hopefully this year. I mean, spoiler alert <laughs> for what's coming up. Uh, <laughs> um, brilliant. Thank you, Sil. And Catherine? Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Catherine Gonzalez. Uh, I was at DoorDash for eight years as their head of design infrastructure, um, which includes things like design systems, accessibility, and prototyping. Um, and now I am an independent uh, design director and engineering director, um, investing in design tools, design systems tools, etc. Brilliant. Fantastic. Well, now I can stop sharing that so everybody can see our lovely faces up nice and big. Um, so I suppose to start off with, uh, let's have a look at a question that is burning on everyone's mind when it comes to AI, especially, I don't think this is design systems, uh, alone. This is anybody with their, how AI is going to affect their job because it's increasingly, we're seeing AI is automating a whole bunch of the work that we do, especially on design systems. And 
I suppose that there are concerns about the potential to replace certain roles. Um, how do you see AI reshaping the job market within the design systems field? And what job opportunities or skill sets do you think will be emerging in the field of design systems sort of in the future because of this? Um, Sil? Yeah, so first of all, I think that AI cannot create any design system because design system is a group effort. There are different people collaborating. It's a community effort, but it can help with creating parts of a design system like a UI kit or design system documentation. But there will still be people to manage the whole system. So I don't think that AI will like completely replace design system experts, but it will help them to get the job faster. So designers will need to learn um, how to deal with data, especially the input, like prompt engineering and the output they get out of AI. So they need to think about AI like a smart assistant to help them achieve better goals like a strategic, uh, they will be involved more in strategic decisions. For example, AI can analyze components and how they perform, so this kind of decisions. And so I think designers should learn about AI in general, how to use it and how it, how it really works and about data. But it will not replace design systems. Yeah, I think, I think this is the thing, right? And it kind of makes sense with design systems. Design systems are about becoming more efficient for product teams. Like it's, it's about increasing, a large part of it is about design, uh, increasing efficiency for um, sort of the product delivery. And I just see AI as another layer on that, right? It's another, it's an extra way of increasing efficiency and it can help make design systems teams more efficient. Um, I'm curious, do you, do you think we're at risk uh, well, you said that we're not at risk of of AI creating a full design system itself, right? Um, I mean, well, I'm curious, actually. Have I, any of you seen any great examples of um, AI creating decent UI? Because I don't think I have yet. I, I think I've seen a few tools that are getting better at creating individual pieces of yeah. UI or very small, very um, focused uh, UI out of like a des existing design system. Um, but I think we're still a long way from, you know, it creating a full design system for you. Yeah, well, I think, and, and that's it. So, sorry, go on. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say, we are actually working on an iteration of a product that would enable you to generate an entire theme of components. We don't call it the design system because, you know, a design system, uh, it's, it's pretty much intent driven. Mm. It's solving specific problems uh, defined by people. But uh, as I, it, it was mentioned before, creating UI kits is trivial. I mean, if you look like design is a language and you can use LLMs and AI to search that language and come up with different ways to interact with, you know, and mix those different components together. So UI kits, absolutely. This is already, you know, we are able to generate UI kits that are on par with design counterparts, mm. but design system is to solve a problem. And this is where the intent of the problem solving is really hard to, to get AI to automate at least for, for now. And I suppose this is it. And we might be jumping ahead here because I think that, you know, really what we should be looking at is what are the potential benefits um, for, for design systems teams with AI. I mean, we've mentioned a couple there, right? Searching, we've mentioned, I know, Sil, you mentioned in your intro, the concept of automatically creating a bucket load of variants, for example. So, you know, extending um, what we're doing um, and doing that auto extending. Do you see any other big areas um, or like big areas of opportunity, I suppose, uh, when it comes to, to AI and design systems? Uh, Catherine? Yeah, I, I think for me, my perspective is coming from supporting a very large organization. So 125 plus designers, 300 plus engineers in that I think 
a lot of the work of design systems at that scale is about supporting those individual contributors in their day-to-day -day workflow, um, providing them the guidance and support that they need. And I think things like you know providing a support chat for a design systems documentation site, um, mm. providing more in um, tool guidance uh, that helps shape how someone does their work in code or does their work in Figma or design. I think that is something that AI provides a lot more opportunity for design systems teams and practitioners to really you know, incorporate into how they work. Anybody else want to jump in there and add? Yeah, I think it's also a great tool to help with analyzing data. So imagine you have hundreds of, one day you have hundreds of design tokens and design decisions. How do you know that there is a design yep. token missing? So it could scan through all of your design tokens and say, oh, there is a primary light, whatever token missing you might, or it's suggesting the next token. It's analyzing your data and making assumptions. But you really, there's a, a, I think AI needs constraints. You need to feed it with good data. Otherwise, it will only produce average output, in my is this, opinion. Do you think that this is what's happening currently? Because I've seen a lot of folks, you know, saying, oh, well, I mean, I tried to use AI, especially for things like documentation. Um, especially, it feels like generative AI is where people, you know, really want to focus on when anybody talks about AI which is, it's the pretty front, right? Um, but a lot of folks, you know, are using things like ChatGPT uh, or even things like Notion AI, which they probably don't realize are powered by ChatGPT or GPT 3.5. Um, and part of that problem is, is that's not trained on a specific data set, right? It's not trained on... Um, good design system data sets and i think that that's that feels like it's an area that that we need to start tooling up on how do we train these large you know large language models on our data or data that we we can say hey this is quality this is you know worthy of trust um it's uh it's interesting have you um, i'm curious actually have any of you folks uh played with that generative ai and had any um luck with it and i suppose you know would you give any tips or or hints to the folks out there yeah i i think um you know touching on what you mentioned about you know how do we have uh design systems um and good design systems be part of the training mm. set for um these tools i think one of the things that i've been seeing is you know someone that's primarily uh advising and investing in design systems and ai companies right now is that um, there is a lot of uh focus and need for people that are effectively design systems and ui curators to be able to bring their expertise and understanding of systems and what is the sort of craft and quality that we want to imbue these large language models and the tools that use them mm. um, with. And so I think there's a lot of um, interesting work being done in terms of uh, design systems um, helping uh, sort of be the bar and guidance that ends up shaping how broader UI design um, tools that use generative AI end up working and the quality that we get from them. Yeah. So um, I think that's an interesting thing that I've seen out in the world. Still. <laughs> yeah, I think um, design systems are perfect. Like we have all this structured data in our design systems. We have all this namings, design decisions. We have a lot of data. We somehow need to feed it into the data model so it can help us with our design system, like our kind of our design system, not the average design system out there. So with ChatGPT, there's like, you. Uh, AI needs constraints, it needs a lot of data, it needs some background information. So when you put in, uh, create a documentation for a button, there will be only an average output. So you need to feed it with data. Maybe you can provide all your brand guidelines, every like all the docs you have, just put it in ChatGPT, if you are allowed to, of course. And then you will get a much 
much better output because it will use use it. It needs context, otherwise it will just provide average output. And I'm afraid that many people are already happy with the average mm-hmm. output, and they don't question it. Is, it is. It's it's interesting because I've been I've been hearing a lot from folks, um, especially in the marketing world, because uh, I feel like marketing is one of the areas where people are getting a bit crazy with AI uh, because they think that it's going to solve all their issues. Um, And I know that they they talk about the fact that it's this AI is going to push everybody into the center of the bell curve. And it's basically, you're going to end up with a whole bunch of copy and paste folks who just, because they're not questioning the output, they're not questioning the, the, you know, the, the data that's going in there and they're not questioning the, the way that they're writing their prompts. Um, everything just come, becomes this gray, boring, <laughs> monotone. Um, and if anybody's read chat GPT output, corporate drivel, um, a lot of it. Um, and I think that that's it. I think it's one of the things that I know um, when anybody's asking me that I always advise is, is go and spend a couple of days learning about prompt engineering. Prompt engineering is not easy. <laughs> it's something that I think everybody needs to... Um, needs to spend a fair bit of time to get good at um it's interesting though so you mentioned there though around the the data that you pump in and whether you're allowed to because obviously again one of the big problems with ai at the moment and a lot of the ai tools out there is that they are um, built off of public data and when you anything you put in then goes into training the model um there's obviously some uh I know that GPT-4 has just recently released an enterprise version that that means that you can wall off your data and have it be private. But I suppose it's one of the the first ethic, one of the first big ethical things that's coming up. Um, and I think that there are quite a few ethical considerations when it comes to AI and how organizations are using it. Um, I was just wondering if if you folks had any uh, that were top of mind for you the organization should be considering when they're thinking about integrating AI into their design systems or using it as part of their process. Um, And I think that there's some interesting ones around legal, but especially around biases and fairness as well. Um, Catherine? Yeah, I I think, you know, first and foremost, organizations that are integrating these tools have to know how they're trained, what is the data that they're training on, um, and, you know, what is the approach that these companies that are building these AI driven design tools are taking. Um, I, I think, you know, getting that understanding is the baseline and then understanding then, you know, how do, you know, we take our data internally that, you know, has its own sort of um, sort of constraints and issues and be able to incorporate that into these tools appropriately um, while ensuring that at the end of the day, when people use these tools, they are being thoughtful and recognizing the sort of limitations and sort of biases that can come from, you know, using a a generative AI tool. I think ultimately, like, there just has to be the right level of thoughtfulness at each stage in terms of buying the tools, using the tools, and building the tools that every company has to, um, you know, sort of consider now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Tony, I'm wondering if you've got any thoughts on the ethical side, now that you're back in the room, uh, on the ethical side of, of um, AI and design systems. Uh, by the way, sorry about the uh, technical issues. No, I think this, uh, this is a good example of, of why tech isn't perfect, right? And ultimately, AI is no different from my camera that stopped working. Um, you know, you can't just put blind your trust into into technology ultimately ai will do mistakes and human in the loop is core to what we do right we build a design tool powered by ai but we don't assume that it will just magically work all the time the the goal is just to enable people to always be in charge always be in control and make sure that they can tweak and and use ai as an assistant really um, uh, to help them go from a to b and not just expect to press one button and 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 job done Um, and, and as it was mentioned before, da- y- y- your AI is only as good as the data, and data is imperfect by nature. So, yeah, we put this at the forefront of or the design principle behind our product. Yeah, I know it's something that we're like that. That's something that we're trying to unpick as well at the moment. Where, um, 
again, I don't know if I'm publicly allowed to say this, but we are definitely looking into AI and how, how it can be integrated in zero height. Um, and obviously, you know, we're a tool that, that has access to a lot of data, but there are some real interesting ethical uh, issues around that and, and getting folks to opt in. And the fact that, you know, a lot of these tools didn't actually allow folks to opt in, uh, opt out for quite a long time, uh, didn't publicly tell you how to opt out. Um, it's some interesting, interesting questions there. Um, so I think that um, I'm really interested in uh, ways that maybe uh, outside of generative AI um, when it comes to design systems, especially around scalability. Actually, I suppose generative AI could play into this as well. Around scalability of design systems, um, do you think that it is a useful tool when it comes to scaling design systems? And how can you see folks maybe using it in a positive way? And potentially maybe what are some of the, you know, pitfalls that, that you've already seen? Uh, Sil? Yeah, I think it can absolutely help with scaling your design system. I mean, like I've mentioned, we have all the data, like design tokens. Imagine now AI helping you analyzing all this data we have. So the cool thing is that now more people can be like, or can work on the design system or the UI, even people who don't have kind of any design skills, they can put together prototypes, they can come up with prompts, they can get really creative so more makers can come together, not only designers and developers, mm. to contribute to the system. Yeah, definitely. Uh, anybody else have anything else to add in there? Yeah, I, I think uh, aside from the support use case that I talked about earlier, one of the things that was always really challenging at the scale of design systems at Verdash was the sort of maintenance burden that was required of getting hundreds of products, hundreds of screens uh, migrated and maintained using design systems. And I think oftentimes that work is um, not super valuable to put, you know, an individual, uh, you know, focus on that for hours and hours of their day to, you know, get a migration across the finish line. Mm. And so seeing tools today, for instance, like on the engineering side that help, um, you know, do migrations through code mods and generated code mods um, through generative AI. I think that's, you know, an area or problem area that I think uh, will be truly impactful to a lot of design systems, especially the ones that are at scale. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, interesting. Um, so I think I'm curious as to what effect, I feel like we're skirting around the same issues here as well. Everything seems to be very interrelated when it comes to AI and design systems. Um, but I'm curious if anybody thinks that this is going to, and I suppose we can even go outside of design systems here, how this is going to influence the culture within design systems teams or design teams or even organizations um, when it comes to, yeah. I, and actually, interestingly, somebody in the chat just said, are we talking more about designers or developers? And I always, my background's in design, so I always default to thinking about designers. But I suppose it's really interesting to think of that from the view of designers and developers as well. Um, Tony? Yeah, to, to the point of what Sil was saying before, and the reason why we built our tool AI first long before Gen AI was the, you know, the latest buzzword is because we wanted to even out the yeah. playing field. And the reason for this is because, to your point, it's not just designers, it's developers, product managers, people that understand the customers, how can we just take everybody, put them in the same room, same workflow, and just get value from all these different human beings? And this is why we believe AI is just such a massive shift in our industry today, because suddenly you make the entire product building process much more inclusive, and you give a voice to people that didn't have a mm. voice before. And ultimately, that means, to your question, the culture of building product will be a much more, I believe, focused on customers and solving the customer's problem instead of having someone focusing on stuff that quite frankly, it's often don't matter to the end yeah. users. Um, so we are all going to benefit from better products. I, I, I hope and believe. Anybody else want to jump in there on the, uh, how it's going to change culture? Yeah. 
Yeah, I 100% I agree with what Tony said. I think one of the things that is a side effect of, you know, people having, you know, a democratization of their ability to contribute to the product development process um, and, you know, having the opportunity to, um, like, you know, work in design or engineering and contribute through that, I think is that you're going to have more blurring of roles. I think they're going to still need to be expertise for different areas, yeah. including things like design systems. But I think there's going to be a lot more um, flexibility in how that expertise gets deployed. I also think there's going to be a lot more people participating in design systems and also design systems designers that maybe didn't know how to code contributing in engineering and vice versa. I think you're going to have a lot more um, opportunity for people to just focus on the deeper problem, but um, not necessarily be constrained by the skill sets they're, they're coming into it with. 100%. I think this is one of actually the biggest um, areas for opportunity with AI is actually it's just democratizing work. Um, it's the same way that the internet kind of democratized a lot of things, you know, way back in the day, it changed the face of, you know, music, cha oh, changed the face of a lot of things, even software development, you know, the internet made it easier for people to build stuff. Um, AI is just going to help that, especially when you think about tools. I, I know definitely on the development side of things, think about tools like, you know, Copilot from GitHub, uh, or even using ChatGPT, the amount of things that I've built just using ChatGPT is astounding how easy it is um, to get something from, you know, nothing to stood up um, and working, um, especially when you think of like integrations and whatnot. Um, oh, we're almost at time before we hand it over and there are a lot of good questions coming through. So I'm really looking forward to uh, diving into the audience questions, but I think one, because I know that people always like really practical. We've been talking very theoretical and at, at a very high level at the moment. Are there any specific tools, uh, AI tools and technologies that you'd recommend people check out or that you've used in, in your workflows already? Um, Sil? No, oh, no. There we go. Oh, just a second. Wrong button. Sorry, sorry. Yes. Yeah, um, <laughs> I have many tools to recommend, but I picked the main ones, three. So, um, you know, the question, if you should name the layers or not, you can solve this really quickly with a really cool Figma plugin. It's called Autoname. Huge shout out to Hugo Dupress. Um, I think we will share the resources will, yeah. and links afterwards for sure. And I would, would like to highlight it because you can also train the data model with your own data, which is pretty cool. It's called Figma Auto Name, and it will re uh, it will name all of your layers in Figma. And then there is a really cool project. It's called Design System Concierge by Kickstart DS. It's a German startup, which basically works like a chatbot, but it's different to ChatGPT because the data source is like. Uh, from different open source design system projects. You can really ask design system specific questions and you will get a really nice output, like not average random output, like sometimes from ChatGPT. And there's also Token Studio working on resolvers. I would like to highlight this because um, somehow we need to feed in all the data in this data model so it can help us with our design system but how can we visualize and analyze design decisions? Because the AI doesn't know why we have created this color palette or why we made certain decisions. It somehow needs to learn why we have made these decisions. So they have a decision tree and a decision uh, knowledge oh, graph. So AI can really like see why you have made these decisions for your tokens Ooh. and components so ai can learn from your design i love decisions. how specific that is it's and i think that's actually one of the the beauties of a lot of the good ai tools that i found so far they've specific use cases they're not big generalist tools um I, tony uh, obviously i know you know you've probably got one big tool to suggest <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to go on the, the cheap lane of uh, talking about own tool, but obviously we use Wizard every day. Uh, but I would like to give a shout out to Clipdrop, which is a French startup that was acquired by Stability. 
uh, and the, the, their suite of AI product is amazing. You can do background removal, image generation, uh, in painting, upsampling, um, and I use them quite a bit. Um, but of course, I use Wizard every day as well <laughs> for obvious reasons. Brilliant. And Catherine, do you have any tool recommendations? Yeah, I, I have a few uh, developer tools for the developers out there. So um, designpatterns.io slash AI is a tool that takes open source um, design systems, um, things like uh, Radix and Chad CN UI for the people that are familiar, and styling sort of strategies like Tailwind, and allows you to provide a prompt, generate UI from it, um, and sort of get a uh, initial starting point component that you can then iterate with it with more prompts or take the code and iterate it on yourself so that's something that's been interesting and it also is um, similar to uh, a, another product called v0.dev from Vercel that um, has come out in this sort of space recently um, and then finally the last one is uh, a more generalist uh, sort of version of the uh, design system concierge uh, that Syl mentioned, which is um, you can provide it any website, including a uh, documentation website, and then you can use that to um, have uh, you know it answer questions and do support chat. So you know if you're drowning in uh, questions from people using your design system, this is a great tool for something like that. Fantastic. Um, and I'm going to make one suggestion, which is a really tiny tool that nobody's probably ever heard of. Uh, it's called Zapier. Um, no, um, I, uh, if anybody hasn't actually got in and had a play with Zapier, um, and their integrations with open AI, it's really great for doing those, those tiny things like the auto naming, um, because you can basically just hook up a whole bunch of stuff, run it through open AI through, uh, all of their models, unfortunately not for yet, but, um, hopefully soon, um, and then pump that information out um, to, to you know, webhooks or whatever you need to get it into the thing that you need. It's really, really quite cool. Uh, highly recommend checking out Zapier's AI stuff. Um, brilliant. Um, as we, but just one more before we get into the audience questions, although I'm not leaving enough time. Uh, as we contemplate the future where design systems and AI merge, can you share, share your radical vision or bold prediction about what design systems could look like in, let's say, 10 years time. Uh, Sil, do you want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, I think in the near future, we will see automation, or I would love to see automation of workflow, something like you've mentioned, you can already mention, like you can already do with Zapier. So with that, I mean automating, like, for example, I've automated all of my bookkeeping with Zapier. I'm the biggest Zapier fan. I would love to also see this in design tools. So imagine there's a trigger like the end of a brainstorming session. Then next step, uh, there will something like a machine will create a summary with top insights. It will send the summary to all the participants. It will create the next calendar invitation and send out all the insights and post it on Slack. So you don't have to like do all oh. these steps for you. And in the yeah, I, I feel you there. I feel <laughs> so you there. I think in the whiteboarding tool. Yeah, I think in the whiteboarding tool, this could already be possible. Imagine the timer is up and it kind of organizes all my sticky notes and that's the next step for me. That would be really cool. And the bold vision, I don't know, I would love to see like a big accessible, uh, well-trained UI kit for the web, you know, a headless unstyled kit with the best UX patterns people can kind of copy paste or generate from and they can style all the components according to their needs so they don't have to never ever have to create button variations uh, everyone should them. definitely go and check out brad Frost's talk from converge us uh he's already apparently trying to start the global design system as a concept and i know that our michelle chin at, at zero height is also uh, trying to help along with that initiative there um, but yeah, oh, that would be amazing. Uh, Tony, what's your bold vision? 
Well, the vision we are working towards is really like making design just not designer's business, but everybody's business in, in the product organization. So if you know, if I if I'm to believe into a future is the one we are trying to build every single day, uh, which is to empower team to build product uh, by enabling everybody to be around yeah. the table. And design system would obviously play a big role in that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and Catherine. Yeah, I I think the. Um you know, touch on what Tony just mentioned. I, I, I think as a part of that, I think you're going to have much smaller teams and teams that stay smaller longer because people have more um, access and ability to um, contribute to design systems, design, engineering, etc. And I think um, you're going to have a lot of really interesting uh, small companies and startups that are going to, you know, be possible because of you know, what AI brings to the table um, and, you know, being able to work with and generate uh, a design system is a part of that. And I think they're going to um, still need to leverage the expertise of, you know, all of the people here in this room. Um, but I think uh, the world is going to look very different in 10 years and you may not have giant corporations in the same way that you have today springing up. Yeah. And I think that that's one of the things that we uh, possibly need to be mindful of as well is that we're, when we're going into this amazing new world where everything is is easier and more democratized that we're not being taken advantage of with that as well in the same way that you know design systems increase speed and efficiency for folks so that we can build better products not so that we can just ship loads of products really really fast uh, um uh or like a you know nice balanced combination of the two um you know, this is my one point to recommend that everybody goes and reads uh, You Deserve a Tech Union by Ethan Marcotte. Um, but anyway, before my bosses jump on and kick me off, we should probably get on to the audience questions. Uh, so first up, we've got a great question from Philip here. Um, given a uh, solid design system is in place, at what point do you think we'll be able to ask an AI powered design tool to generate a few versions of a sign-up process or a checkout system for an e-commerce system, uh, which can then later be edited and tested. Do we think that's, well, I mean, I've, I've got an answer for this, but <laughs> I'm wondering if anybody else wants to jump in there. I, I think it's possible. I think it oh. depends. It... Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'll go okay, ahead. Catherine, go, go first. Uh, I think it is, I think it is, possible now, even though there's still uh, limited um, tools that are publicly available that people um, can access. I think uh, there's, um, you know, examples of this happening today that I think are going to uh, change uh, design teams workflows in the next year or so. So I think it is possible. Yeah, I think it is possible as well, but it depends if you want like personalized output. We somehow need to train or somehow take all the data from your design system, train AI so it can give like specific recommendations. So if you want like UI component recommendations, how to where to place the top nav bar or this kind of stuff, it can already do. But if it, if you're like looking for help with specific your specific UI components, where, where you probably have some 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 unique you have made some unique design decisions, I don't think that it's already possible. Yeah, I'm interested because obviously Tony, this does touch on well, I suppose yours wizards more at the component level, right? That's what I was going to say. If you if if you are okay with the UI kit level, the poor man's design system, we can do this in the wizard today. You will set up your, your UI kit and then, hey, make me a sign-up flow for an e-commerce website. And you can generate like a dozen. Uh, so we can do this today. But to to what you know Catherine and, and Seal said, if you have very specific pattern at the you know like design system level, mm. it, it won't work today. Um, I think that it's it's not far off though. I'm actually I'm trying to find the there is a there's a plugin that already exists for uh, GPT four that I know that you can basically feed in a sketch, um, and it will generate something that is it's not perfect, but it's decent, based off of you know 
how a lot of other websites look. So you're never going to get anything mind blowing or revolutionary there. The concept of then feeding in, you know, your principles and guidelines. Um, I think it's just that that, exactly. yeah, that that tool hasn't yet been built, but I wouldn't say, I think it's a hundred percent possible today. It's just around the level of quality that you're going to get and also how you get those data sets, right? <laughs> and how you get the data sets that you're going to trust. Um, I know that, um, give us nine months. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, th with the strides that we've made in the last two years, three years, it's probably only going to be a matter of months before we do anything else. Um, I'd recommend keeping an eye on, uh, if you don't follow him already, Kevin Coyle, uh, from big medium, uh, he's doing a lot of stuff in the background based off of the data that they have access to a big medium, which is of course where, uh, Brad Frost and Josh Clark work. Um, and they, they're basically using a lot of their internal data to train that. And it's fast. It's going to be fascinating to see what they, uh, come out with. It's all internal at the moment, but, um, geez, when they, uh, when they release that, it's going to be pretty impressive. Uh, we've got another one here. Uh, another good question from Kartik. Uh, I would love thoughts from the panel on how to go about designing a data set on which an AI could be fine tuned on. Um, an example data set would be very much be appreciated. I'm curious if you don't mind, Tony, because you're obviously the one here who has the experience of building a tool based off of AI data sets. Um, you know, as much as you can talk about it, um, how you went about, you know, pulling that together to make sure that it was uh, of a quality that you were happy with. Well, ultimately, LLMs are really good at understanding text. That's what they were trained on and how they started. So if you can somehow encode your design system in text, then you'll, you'll be able to get the LLM to understand it. So whether you you know, want to go through the pain of encoding a design system into HTML and CSS or JSON or whatnot, that would be a good starting point if you want to start experimenting with that. Brilliant. Um, and just curious, Syl or Catherine, anything else to add in there? Yeah, I think also if you have your design tokens in JSON format, it really understands the code. So we need the code, we need structured data. I don't think that it can read your Figma file design yet. <laughs> there is, There are ways of scraping as well from uh, documentation sites as well, depending on what documentation site provider um, you use. Uh, again, not promising anything, but I know it's an area that we're very much looking into to how you um, read that data. Um, but yeah, I think that it is one of those things where it's it's obviously text is king there. Uh, and that is going to um, probably continue for a little while. Although in saying that, you know, the multimodal, uh, multimodal inputs are getting better and better as day. I mean, Dali uh, last week, they're, they're now claiming that, that it can actually do text well, um, which is, you know, yeah. been a big hurdle. For... I mean, to give an example, like we, we've built a feature to enable people to take a screenshot and it will extract the component from the screenshot. And we've had that since 20, 2020. Mm. So with multimodal GPT, I mean, this is going to happen within three, six months maximum. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. We've got another great question here from, from Simon. Um, so a design system's worst enemy is custom assets, designs that break components to fill an individual designer's specific need in a project. It's especially true in large companies. Uh, do you see a possibility for AI to be able to automatically find those anomalies, make sure they're all in line with the visual language and bring them into the system automatically? Uh, consistency enforced by a robot. Uh, Catherine? Yeah, I, I think one of the things that um, even pre-generative AI, uh, you know, we investigated at DoorDash and I've seen others create uh, Figma plugins for is this idea of a linter for um, design and for like design styles to um, ensure that something that's custom and new is uh, working in line with an existing set of styles. And so I think, you know, even um, without AI powering it, that was always a really effective sort of path to 
um, kind of uh, recognizing and helping guide uh, something custom back into like the design system family, yeah. uh, so to speak. Um, and so I think with generative AI, you're going to have much more opportunity to um, you know, spot those things efficiently and then like provide better suggestions, I think, to, you know, what should um, be changed or adjusted to then bring it into a design system. Yeah. Phil, anything else to add in there? Yeah, I'm really looking uh, forward to this because I think AI is really good at uh, really quickly analyzing a huge data set and so um, humans make mistakes because you cannot like overview hundreds of designs or design tokens so I think um, AI will help with that pretty soon but it somehow needs of course access to your design mm -hmm. and your data set so I don't know any any plugin right now but hey that's that's why we have open LLMs that you can download and play with yourself or hand off to developers to play with yourself. I know Llama, Llama's one that, you know, will work because that's the thing is that there's no, there's no reason why it couldn't be done. We're talking about, especially when we're talking about on the code side, like we're talking about structured data. This is, if you have a design system, <laughs> it should be structured in a way that is relatively easy to understand. Um, I'm interested here. We have a, a question from Brian, uh, uh, and, and a good good calling us out because I always like the especially conversations around AI can end up being very hypothetical. Um, so I'm curious to hear any actual practical uses that any of you folks have had that you can use, like as an example, where you've actually used AI on a production design system, um, or why you haven't yet. Uh, Catherine? Yeah, uh, so one example that um, we were working on at DoorDash uh, as I was leaving was actually taking the data set of um, Figma, uh, sorry, uh, Slack conversations in relation to uh, a support chat um, and being able to use that to train um, a support chat bot effectively yeah. so that um, it could take information from the documentation side, exist like previous and existing chats and um, help sort of guide someone that uh, needed help with a design system without needing to have our team members get involved super deeply at the beginning. It's pretty cool. Tony? Well, we use AI daily when it comes to design and prototyping, but for the design system part of it specifically, no, uh, we haven't actually had any major kind of like AI breakthrough on, on that front just yet. Still doing things manually and painfully <laughs> like uh, the rest of us. Well, here, maybe this would just be the kick up, you know, kick in the butt that you need to uh, get started with it. Um, Very uh, true. Still? Yeah, so I've, uh, I've used ChatGPT to create uh, design token structure and namings. It's a very, very long prompt. It was created by a friend of mine, Chris Luders, a huge shout out, but it will um, generate a design tokens naming structure for you. You can copy paste to Figma and then it will create all the styles. You can share the prompt afterwards for sure. Yeah, that'd be notes. really great if you could share that. Um, I know we've also had a bit of a play with uh, a bit of prompt engineering for documentation um, specifically. It did require a lot of back and forth to get it right. Um, but to be fair, I mean, I'm going to say something controversial here, but, you know, 80% of design system documentation looks the same. Uh, <laughs> And so, so to be honest, if ChatGPT has been built off of public models of what design system documentation is publicly available out there, it, it doesn't provide awful. It provides pretty good starting points is what I found. Um, and with a tiny little bit of prompt engineering, you can usually get that to be a little bit more focused um, uh, as long as you're okay inputting, you know, your own information about your design system into GPT. Um, brilliant. I think we have one time for one last, uh, question here. Um, now to pick the best one though, <laughs> um, here we go. 
Uh, here's one from Ben. Uh, I'd love to hear your vision about uh, with suggestions on the use of different components in a complex component. Ah, okay, here we go. It's a, a, a slightly convoluted question and it's late in the day for me. Um, but I believe this is around uh, how do you see AI being used to extend components or to build out complex components? Um, and I suppose what goes into that sort of from from your end uh what can you see going into that what do you need to be mindful of when you're you know trying to use ai to extend out oh uh <laughs> catherine uh i think one easy thing that i can imagine is you know let's say you have um a set of components that often get used together yep. being able to take existing examples from um, your products or code bases and being able to say, hey, it seems like this component is something that has been used pretty frequently in the context of a modal or a sidebar or something like that. And then being able to say, um, this is something that, uh, you know, is likely for you to want to use uh, basically a super powered autocomplete. So I think that's like an easy uh, answer to that. Brilliant. Uh, anybody else had experience with building out complex components using AI? <laughs> Not really. See, now I'm, I'm trying to uh, think of a great final question that we can finish the webinar on now. <laughs> um, I suppose uh, if you had one recommendation of something for people to watch or read uh, or go and check out, especially in the world of AI, um, what would be your like one recommendation off the top of your head? Uh, Tony, we'll go to you first. Oh, that's a tough one. There's just so much content. Um, and, and, you know, I, I told you I'm a nerd, so I would be tempted to tell people to go read some papers, but I don't think that would that would be very interesting to uh, all folks. Um, but just, you know, there's just so much great content on Twitter, honestly, these days on OX, sorry, I should say. Um, and people sharing <laughs> how they are hacking some of these LLMs to, to do stuff that LLMs were not trained for. Yeah, yeah. Sil, do you got any good recommendations? Yeah, I also have a hack. So instead of reading all those Medium articles, I basically copy paste the text into ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to give me the top insights. <laughs> because yeah, there's a lot of great content, but I don't have time to read all those articles. I just want the key insights. Also, I can recommend to watch the presentation by Token Studio about uh, visualizing design decisions and uh, this, um, design tokens graphs. You can find it on YouTube. Um, look for PanPod and Token Studio. I think it's quite yeah, interesting. Yeah, fantastic. Um, by the way, your your little hack, it's, it's, it was a game changer for me as well. Um, Feedly uh, have an AI feed <laughs> for, for their feeds as well. So if you RSS feed uh, into Feedly and then um, you can supplement it with AI, chuck that into Zapier, run it through chat GPT, and then pump it out into a Slack panel. It's phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> um, brilliant. And Catherine? <laughs> yeah, I, I think for me, you know, uh, the, the space is moving so fast yeah. and there are new breakthroughs and new information every day. So I think like, you know, uh, being aware of what's going on, but not needing to um, you know, see every piece of it because things are going to change rapidly is a big uh, piece of advice for me. And then the other thing is, I think just finding some way to integrate an existing AI tool into your workflow. Yeah. Um, even, you know, uh, for instance, like for me, one of the things that I think about is when I do design work, sometimes I'm just trying to um, get some ideas for the like, color palettes or things like that. Working with an existing tool like Midjourney or ChatGPT, just to you know do a small thing like that, um, that's a way to get in touch with the tools. And I think figuring out more um, you know points like that to integrate into your workflow, that's just the best way to like understand AI as it continues to grow really rapidly. Definitely, definitely. Um, if I'd I'd recommend if anybody's interested, AI Breakfast, a very good mailing list to sign up to. Uh, which has interestingly has a combination of 
um, the latest news in the AI world and um, any sort of interesting blog posts they've found, as well as the academic journal papers, uh, which is very good uh, for you, Tony. Um, and um, and then my other recommendation is uh, a slightly left field one, but a podcast called Marketing Against the Grain, which is actually about marketing, but uh, they talk about so many advances in AI and there's some really interesting left field use cases that... Uh, I've been able to sort of feed into the team at Zero Height uh, on how we work on our design processes and design systems as well. Um, amazing. Thank you so much, folks, for for joining. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I'm just going to chuck the uh, slide back up here so that folks can see your handle so they can follow you online. Uh, everybody, please go and follow these people because they're all fantastic. Um, and uh very knowledgeable in the, the the areas of design systems so it's been an absolute pleasure to have you folks and of course ai with you know tony's tony's building one of the next generation of products um thank you so much to everybody for joining as well uh so we'll be back we've got a webinar tomorrow design systems wtf with myself and michelle uh, and then we've got those other ones. If you go to zerohightcom slash webinars, you can see all the upcoming ones we've got, as well as all the previous ones, which have the links to the recordings there. Until next time, uh, I've been Luke. We've been Zero Height. And uh, keep going and playing with robots. Thanks, folks. <laughs>